welcome to chapter 20. It begins, Ezekiel speaks to the elders. And it came to pass in the seventh year, in the fifth month, tenth of the month. Now, I haven't figured this out yet. Uh, if what tenth, the seventh year of the king, which king it would be. Uh, I don't know how it, what, what this is. But um, anyway, there came men from out of the Presbyterion, Presbyterians, derivative of the Iku Israel. Iku, we have economy, it comes from that word, uh, to ask of the Lord and sat before my face. And the word of the Lord came to me, saying, O son of Anthropu, as he says before, speak to the presbyterus of Israel, and you shall say to them, Thus says Adonai Kyrios, Shall you come uh, to ask me? As I live, I shall not be answering to you, says Adonai Kyrios. Well, you're coming to talk to me? <laughs> I'm not going to answer. Shall I punish them with punishment, O son of man? Ask Ezekiel. Uh, testify them to them of their lawless deeds. And you shall say to them, Thus says the Lord, Curios, from which day I took up the house of Israel and made known to the sperma, spermati, Iku, the sperm, uh, made known to the seed of Jacob and was known by them in the land of Egypt and took hold of them with my hand, saying, I am the Lord your God. In that day I took hold of them by my hand to lead them from out of the land of Egypt into the land which I prepared for them, a land flowing milk and honey. The honeycomb is beyond every land. And I said to them, I'll Let each throw away the abominations of his eyes, and in the practices of Egypt be not defiled. I am the Lord your God. So God is laying out here how he came to these people after being, uh, having went into Egypt for 400 years when Jacob and the family went to uh, go to Egypt when jo Joseph became a second in, uh, under the Pharaoh. And these people grew until there are uh, close to a million people or so that are more that left Egypt when they did leave. But uh, he, they picked up a lot of the Egyptian uh, idolatry and practices so they were probably doing a little of both. They knew the things of God. Well, they didn't have a law. All they had were the stories, basically, that were in the uh, book of Genesis. That would have been all they had. Exodus was not did not happen yet. Nothing after that. So all these people, for all this period of time, all they had were the stories in the book of Genesis, and they might might not have even been written down. It may have just been uh, uh, oral tradition, storytelling. But what does it happen? Uh, and they revolted from me and not wanted not to listen to me. Uh, each threw not away the abominations of their eyes and the practices of Egypt they abandoned not. And I spoke to pour out my rage upon them to complete my anger among them in the midst of Egypt. So uh, when Moses came, then uh, it says, And the people believed, and they rejoiced that God visited the sons of Israel, and that he saw their affliction. So they were happy when Moses came and said that God was sending him, and he did these uh, signs with the um, rod that became a serpent, and then all the different plagues. But in um, Exodus 5.21, uh, the defection, uh, it mentions uh, their unbelief in Exodus 5.21 in Egypt. And then by the sea, when they were leaving, uh, they said in Exodus 14, 15, disregard us so that we may slave to the Egyptians. They didn't want to leave, and they were afraid that they were going to be attacked uh, by the Egyptians while they were being attacked. And then when they got into the wilderness of it's called sin, um, it says in Exodus 16, 8, uh, for your grumbling is not against us, 
but against God. And so they started grumbling uh, against God and the things that were happening via, uh, through Moses. And then a little bit later, the rock of Horeb uh, in Exodus 17, 7, it says, and he named the name of that place, test and reviling it, be Moses, on account of the reviling of the sons of Israel and on account of the testing the Lord, they're testing the Lord, saying, is the Lord with us or not? So they were um, losing belief in God uh, early, and this is what God is talking about here in Ezekiel. Then it got worse in Exodus 32, 9 and 10. Uh, they set up the golden calf when Moses went up Mount Sinai to take get the uh, commands. And it says, and now allow me, uh, God says that, for being enraged in anger against them, I will obliterate them and I will make you into a great nation. So he was going to destroy all the people of Israel uh, and make a new nation, uh, the Mosaic nation, but uh, he didn't. Then uh, then a little bit further in Numbers 11, 3, we're told the place, and he, came, and he called the name of that place combustion, for fire of the Lord burned among them. So the anger of the Lord uh, was kindled against the children of Israel. And uh, I felt like writing a book called Theomachy, which is a, a war against God. It seems like these people warred against God uh, from uh, the time of Moses on down, even till today. And a, a book could be written about the Theomachy, the war against God by the Jews. Then in Numbers 12, 9, we have the rebellion of Aaron and Miriam. The anger of the Lord was upon them, it says. And uh, they um, didn't think that Moses was the only leader, but yet God had chosen Moses, and uh, he caused Miriam to come down with leprosy. And then in Numbers 14, 12, it says, uh, at the, and when they were at, finally got to the... Uh, uh, they were at the uh, land of Canaan at the first time, at the beginning, uh, before the 40 years wandering. And the Lord said to Moses, For how long does this people provoke me? And for how long do they not trust me for all the signs which I did among them? I will strike them in death, and I will destroy them, and will make you into a great and populous nation rather than this one. God had it with Israel at the very beginning uh, as they were leaving uh, Egypt. So uh, this is w where we're at right here. And he says, and I acted so that my name should not be thoroughly profaned before the nations. So he didn't destroy them because of his name, uh, which uh, they are in the midst of them, in which I made known to them uh, of their presence, that is, the nations knew of, of the people, children of uh, Israel, to lead them from out of the land of Egypt. And I led them from out of the land of Egypt and led them into the wilderness. So all the things I had before was before they went into the wilderness. And it says, and I gave them my orders and I made known my ordinances to them, which he did on Mount Sinai. How if a man should do them, then he shall live by them. And my Sabbaths I gave to them to be for a sign between me and between them, for them to know that I am the Lord, the one sanctifying them. So here we see the Sabbath between the Jews and God. It's not, I don't believe, uh, I think uh, there's a rest, but the Sabbath, the Sabbath is not, the, is not exactly the same. Uh, the seventh day rest uh, is God rested on the seven days when he made the earth, and it talks about the seven-day rest. But the Sabbaths don't start until uh, after Moses, I believe. And so anyway, he made them for them to know that I am the Lord, the one sanctifying them. And now we continue with uh, uh, condemnation of what they were doing. And uh, the house of Israel greatly embittered me in the wilderness. In my orders they went not, and my ordinances they thrust away. 
which a man shall do them and shall live by them. What did they do? Well, and once they got into the wilderness, they first in Numbers 16, 21, it talks about the rebellion of Korah, where these Levites came against Moses and uh, revolted. And God says, and sever yourself from out of the midst of this congregation, and I will completely consume them at once. So with that rebellion, God was going to destroy the whole, all of the Jews. Israel would have been gone at this rebellion of Korah. But Moses uh, was able to talk God out of it. And then in Numbers 16.45, it says that uh, Israel grumbles against Moses and Aaron. And they said, withdraw from out of the midst of this, uh, God says, withdraw from out of the midst of this congregation, and I shall completely consume them at once. It's the third time he's going to completely consume the Jewish nation. So they did not start off very well. Then in number 1710, uh, they uh, didn't believe in the uh, Aaronic priesthood and um uh, God had them t- era Moses take a rod and put it aside, and it came back the next day, and uh, Aaron's rod budded of all the tribes. And it says, uh, put aside the rod of Aaron before the testimony profes- for preservation for a sign to the sons of the unhearing, and let their grumbling cease from me, so in no way they shall die. So they're continuing to grumble, even uh, uh, at, in the middle of the wilderness. Then, in Numbers 21.5, the people spoke ill against God and against Moses, it says. And you can read all about what God had Moses do was set up a serpent of brass and because the people were being struck by these uh, serpents. So um, the people spoke ill against God, fighting against God. And then, in Numbers 25.3, it gets worse, Baal Peor. And Israel was in, initiated to Baal Peor. And the Lord was provoked to anger and rage against Israel. So again, they are provoking God. And so this is all the things that they did. And now uh, God is relating this, uh, his anger to Ezekiel. And they profaned my Sabbath exceedingly. And I spoke to pour out my rage upon them in the wilderness to completely consume them three times. And I acted so that my name, the thorough one, should not be profaned before the nations, which I led them out before their eyes. So he did, uh, didn't consume them because he wanted the people to see that he is their God. So uh, Israel is still the people that God has, um, it says his prized people in one place, the chosen people, even if they fail. Uh, they are still uh, a people that God uh, will deal with and uh, not kindly, but yet uh, he deals with them instead of just not even caring and let them do whatever they want to do like so many other nations. In verse 15, And I lifted my hand against them in the wilderness, the thorough one, to not bring them into the land which I gave to them, a land flowing milk and honey. The honeycomb is beyond all the land because they thrusted away my ordinances, and in my orders they went not by them. And they profaned my Sabbaths and went, uh, went after the thoughts of their hearts, and they wandered for 40 years. My eye spared them to not wipe them away. So he wanted to wipe them away, but he spared. And I uh, did not commit them unto consumption in the wilderness." And I said to their children in the wilderness, uh, Do not go in the laws of your fathers, and do not keep their ordinances, and do not intermingle in their practices, and be not defiled. So uh, the children uh, that went into the promised land with Joshua, then uh, they were warned not to do the things of the fathers. We have the warnings, the blessings, and the curses on Mount Ebal, and curses on um, Ebal, and... um, I can't. I can't think of the name of the other where the mountain that they had the curses. But anyway, I so uh, they were warned uh, before they went into the 
uh, promised land. He continues, I am the Lord your God. Go by my orders and keep my ordinances and do them. Uh, what were they doing? Well, they were not uh, going after the laws of God. Uh, it, basically, they were setting up their own ordinances, and they weren't going after God's ordinances here. But yet later when Jesus came, uh, he says, why, do you all, why also do you violate the commandment of God through your tradition? That's Matthew 15, 3. So they were not uh, later not going by uh, the commands or making up these other oral laws. And my sampa, sanctify them. And it will be for a sign between me and you to know that I am the Lord your God. Again, between me and you. And they rebelled against me, and their children went not by my orders, and my ordinances they guarded not to do them, which if a man does, then he shall live by them. And my Sabbaths they profaned, and I spoke to pour out my rage upon them and to complete my anger against them in the wilderness. And I turned my hand against them, and I acted because of myself, so that my name should not be thoroughly profaned before the nations from whom I led them out before their eyes, so he didn't destroy them because of the nations. And I lifted up my hand against them in the wilderness to disperse them among the nations and to scatter them in the places because they observed not my ordinances. Now, we don't have too much of that, and I don't see that in um, is Exodus, Leviticus, and Numbers about scattering these people, but apparently many of them left and probably joined these uh, peoples different places in the wilderness. So he allowed them, they, they left, uh, and he scattered them, it says, and they thrusted away his orders and profaned my Sabbaths, and their eyes uh, were after the thoughts of their fathers. That was the traditions uh, that they were doing, not the laws. And so even early on they were doing this, not doing what God wanted. And I gave them up to orders that were not good, and ordinances in which they shall not live by them. And I believe that's what they have today. They study the Talmud, uh, which is the writings of the rabbis. Instead, I don't know, they shouldn't even read that. They should be reading the Bible, uh, God's Word. Why read man's Word when you have God's Word? I mean, you're cheating yourself. Uh, and I will defile them in their decrees, the dogma. That comes from that dogma scene, the dogmas. In my traveling by everyone opening wide the womb, so that I should obliterate them, that they shall know that I am the Lord. And when he sees these people, you know, he could ob obliterate them. But on account of this, speak to the house of Israel, o son of man. So he's sending Ezekiel again to try to turn these people, as he has done with so many prophets, Jesus and the, uh, all of the saints of the New Testament. And you shall say to them, Thus says Adonai Kyrios, Until this time your fathers provoked me to anger in their transgressions in which they fell against me. Now, do they st have, are they still doing that? I believe they are. And I brought them into the land which I lifted up my hand to give it to them. I changed and made a period and started a new sentence. And they beheld every high hill and every shady tree and sacrificed there to their gods. So right away they got into idolatry. Well, not right away, but basically starting with King Solomon. And he brought these gods in uh, because of his wives that he married from all these surrounding nations. And these wives had their gods and he brought them in. And they arranged there the wrath of their gift offerings. And they arranged there a scent of their pleasant aroma offering. And they offered a libation there of their libation offerings, all to these idols. And I said to them, what is Abama that you enter there? Uh, Abama in the Hebrew means a high place of idolatry. Why are you going there? And they called upon uh, his name, Abama, until today's a day, the high place, still had the high places. And then verse 30, on account of this, 
say to the house of Israel, thus says Adonai Kyrios, shall uh, you defile yourselves in the lawless deeds of your fathers? And uh, do you fornicate after their abominations? Turns it into uh, as a sexual uh, fornication, perversion, which maybe that was what they were doing. And in the first fruits of your gifts and in your offerings, in the passing through your children in fire, you defile yourself in all your thoughts until today's day. And what he's talking about here is the southern valley outside of the wall of Jerusalem called the Valley of Hinnom. They set up a shrine to Tophet. It's called Tophet. And in the shrine was the god Molech, of which they burned their children on the fires in front of, or in the arms of Molech. And should I answer to you, O house of Israel, as I live, says Adonai the Lord, shall I answer to you? And shall this thing ascend upon your spirit? And it will not be in which manner that you say, well, we will be uh, as the nations and as the tribes of the earth to serve wood and stone idols. It's not going to happen. God has another plan. On account of this, as I live, says Adonai Kyrios, With a fortified hand and with a high arm and with rage being poured forth, I will reign over you. And I will lead you from out of the peoples and I will take you from out of the places of which you were dispersed in them. With a fortified hand and with a high arm and with rage being poured forth. Now, um, where is this? he says, and I will lead you into the wilderness of the peoples, and, and I will litigate for you there face to face. Uh, scrutinizing is another word for this uh, 1242, scrutinizing them. He's going to deal with them. And I, I believe this could very well uh, be a future time. In which manner I litigated for your fathers in the wilderness of the land of Egypt, so I will judge you, says Adonai Kyrios. And I will lead you by my rod, and I will bring you in by number. And now they have come now uh, since 1948 and repopulated Israel. But I believe the beast is going to come. I believe they will again, uh, Jerusalem will be destroyed and they will be separated uh, throughout the world. And then later uh, the beast will be destroyed and then God will bring them back in to Israel but then he will set up a different place uh, for them to go to for their sacrifices. And it won't be Jerusalem. It will be the city that will be named at that time. We'll get to that in the last chapter of the book of Ezekiel. And um, this uh, city is east of Lake, Lake of Galilee. And I shall choose from out of you the impious ones and the ones revolting for I will lead them from out of their sojourning, and they shall not enter into the land of Israel, that is, the ones uh, revolting and impious, so that only the holy ones will be in this new city. And you shall realize that I am Kyrios, Yahweh, Jehovah, the Lord. Uh, And to you, O house of Israel, thus says Adonai Kyrios, let each remove his evil practices. Now, to the ones then, or to the ones today. Remove your evil practices, and they're having these festivals in Tel Aviv for the homosexuals. And after these things, if you listen to me and profane not my holy name any longer by your gifts and by your practices, that upon my holy mountain, upon the high mountain of Israel, says Adonai the Lord, there all the house of Israel shall serve to me unto the end upon the land. That is a future time. We'll find out all about that in the last 10 chapters of this book. Again, uh, this uh, it's a high city on a high mountain will be named at that time. You can go back if you want to peek, and it's there in the last four, 10 chapters. And there I will favor, favorably receive them, and there I shall watch your first fruits and the first fruits of your offerings 
in all your sanctified things. Now, what's he talking about? Here, if you go to um, Ezekiel 44.30, you'll see the first fruits, uh, and then uh, in uh, uh, mentions in one place. Then in verse in chapter 45, it mentions the first fruits uh, six times and 48, 11 times. So you, when we get there, we'll get all about these first fruits. But here, this is a new city, a new place, a new um, way of uh, lifting up the Lord and offering these sacrifices and everything. It's not Jerusalem. In a scent of pleasant aroma, I will favorably receive you in my leading you from out of the peoples and to take you from out of the places in which you were dispersed in them. That's not today. And I shall be sanctified in you before the eyes of the people. So then it will be, uh, the people will be holy to the Lord. And you shall realize that I am the Lord in my bringing you into the land of Israel, into which I lifted my hand to give it to your fathers. This is at that future time. And you shall remember your ways there and your practices which you defiled yourselves by them even today. And you shall beat your faces in, uh, in all of your evils. And you shall realize that I am the Lord in my doing thus to you, so that my name should not be profaned, not according to your evil ways, nor according to your corrupting uh, practices, O house of Israel, says Adonai the Lord. Then they will know uh, the Lord at this holy city that we will find out more about. Uh, it will be, um, there won't be anything profaning, profaning there. Uh, then it changes here in, in the King James. I'm not sure if this is in 21, 21.1 uh, might be. Uh, the, the, the versification gets a little bit mixed up. But it says, And the word of the Lord came to me, saying, again, the Logos, Kiryu, a son of Anthropu, firmly fix your face against Taman, Thaiman. And uh, the King James doesn't have that. It says the south, and then it has the south twice, but it has two different Hebrew words. So it's kind of weird, but the first Hebrew word is a Taman, but they made it in the south somehow. But Taman, apparently, we'll, we're going to be finding out that later this is the southernmost boundary of the uh, new Israel. And where is this Taman? It's actually fairly north, way further north uh, than the border is today. Why? We'll find out here. And um, firmly fixed your face against Taman and look upon Daror, which is uh, it says, and prophesy against or over the grove leading to Negev. So they're north of the Negev, at the southern part of the Dead Sea, straight across west. Um, this would be uh, where uh, Taman uh, and Daror probably were, and prophesying against the grove uh, leading to Negev. So what is that he's talking about here? Well, let's go in here and we'll see. And you shall say to the grove of Negev, Okay, change that to Demon, Demona, the place where the nuclear plant uh, sits in Israel. And you shall say to the grove of the Negev, where Demona sits, Hear the word of the Lord. Thus says the Lord, Behold, I kindle in you a fire. Wow! And it shall devour in you every green tree and every dry tree. The flame being lit shall not be extinguished. So, I think Demona will be incinerated, gone, blown up somehow. The whole land will be um, completely irradiated and not unlivable. So that it couldn't be that nobody would go down there at that time. The southernmost part would be Taman and most everything above it. So uh, this area would be incinerated. It says that right here. And uh, every face from the east wind unto the north shall be incinerated by it. And all flesh, all flesh shall realize that I am the Lord. I kindled it, and it shall not be extinguished. So it's not going to be put out. And I said, by no means, O Lord, O Lord, these shall say to me, is this, uh, is, is uh, this not a parable being spoken? Is, that, is this going to happen? What? <laughs> there. Who are you talking about? Ezekiel? 
this is unbelievable with the things that you're talking about. And that's what I'm saying. It doesn't say that, of course, but this is probably their reaction like ours today. So I see this as very interesting. Chapter 21, he gets back and goes to Babylon, God's sword of judgment, using evil people to um, chastise other evil people. We'll find out about that in chapter 21. Hope you'll join us in chapter 21. God bless.